miss some of yesterday's NBA action? Well, that sucks because that, just yesterday, man, that was some great basketball. So many good games on the dock. But I'm here for you guys. Here's TV's NBA Daily Recap where we talk about each NBA game from yesterday in a short amount of time. Let's go. We're going to talk about the first game from yesterday, and it is the Brooklyn Nets defeating the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, you heard me right. The Brooklyn Nets defeating the Milwaukee Bucks 119-116. Great contributions from Timothy Wau Kabaru with 26 points and 3 rebounds. And Garrett Temple was big throughout the game, scoring 19 points, grabbing 5 rebounds and 4 assists. On the Bucks side of things, not a lot of offense really going on. Um, leading scorer is Giannis, even though he only played the first half. But, the, yeah, the Brooklyn Nets were able to get the win here. Um, it was a close game throughout because the Brooklyn Nets were like they were going to, like, take over this game in the second half. But the Bucks bench, I mean, they were really trying their best to win this game for them. Whether it was Kyle Korver hitting three after three, whether it was Frank Mason taking it to the rim. It looked like the Bucks were actually going to win it. But the Brooklyn Nets winning the game, they had um, Garrett Temple, who was hitting shot after shot for them winning the game, which... You know, led them to this win. So, I mean, I wouldn't take much away from this game just because the Bucks were playing with, with basically their um, reserve lineup. But Brooklyn got a win here, and it's very much needed. They want to get like not get the Bucks in the first round. I mean, they're probably going to lose the Bucks or Raptors in the first round, but they pref- much prefer the Raptors. But good win for the Brooklyn Nets, I guess. But I wouldn't take much away because it's the Bucks reserve team. We go from that to a very exciting game where the Dallas Mavericks finally win a game. Um, they win 114-110 in overtime over the Sacramento Kings. Luka becoming the first, the fourth player um, since 1980 to record a 30-point, 20-rebound, 10-assist performance. Absolutely fantastic game from him. Great contributions in the starting lineup. Not much besides that. I mean, KP, another 22-point game good 22 points from Tim Hardaway and on the Kings side of things you know Deer and Fox another great game 28 points and even Buddy Hill coming off the bench at 21 like the Kings had a were like in control for the majority of this game and it wasn't until like Luka finally like kind of started turning it on like he was like doing finally doing his Luka type um, maneuvers until like for them to finally get the win because the Mavericks were trailing like at several points of the game but they had the best player on the court, and he was able to get in the win. Very impressive side of the line. I mean, someone at the guard position getting 20 rebounds is highly impressive. And Luka did it, and he's one of four people like um, since 1980 to do so. We move on to the talk of the town yesterday. We were talking about the Phoenix Suns versus the Los Angeles Clippers. And man, this game was super duper exciting because the Phoenix Suns, Came up with the win, 117-115 over the Clippers. And unlike the Brooklyn Nets game, both teams were at full strength. Even Lou Williams was able to play in this game after being quarantined for 10 days. And he was only able to score, you know, um, 7 points. But he was still in that game nonetheless. But the biggest talking point was that, man, I mean, the Suns were, like, leading for the majority of the game. Like, they were, like, actually, like, going toe-to-toe with the um, LA Clippers offensively and it was obviously led by Devin Booker who hit one of the craziest game winners at the end of this let me page you the scene the Suns get a shot off couldn't go Vika Zubac gets the rebound tries to throw an outlet pass gets intercepted by the Suns six seconds left they throw it to Devin Booker gets double teamed by both Kawhi and Paul George and was able to hit up fading three with Paul George's hand right on top of his mouth Legitimately, and it was one of the better game winners of um, the year. Obviously, the best um, game winner in the bubble. And you know, these Suns are playing fantastic. I mean, they're like they know what they are. They are a jump shooting team, and they were able to take this to their advantage against the LA Clippers because 17 for 32, over 50 percent from the three point line. And although they they couldn't, um, they don't have the star power the Clippers had. They were just able to outshoot them in this game, and it was. Um, it was a joy to watch, and they were and they were good with the basketball. They didn't turn over the ball a lot, and that's what led them to this win. Do they have a chance at the playoffs? Very slim, still, but it was great to see them have this um, this game against a really good team. 
We move on to the next game, and we have the Indiana Pacers winning their third game in the bubble, winning 120-109 over the Orlando Magic. And TJ Warren is a man on a mission. He cannot be stopped. Another game, 32 points, two rebounds, three assists. Another um, 13 for 17 from the field, three, four for five from three. Magic, um, good performances from Nikola Vucevic, 24 points. Um, Terrence Ross had a good 20-point outing, and Aaron Gordon as well. And the thing about this game is, like, the Indiana Pacers were in control. Like, I think at some point they were winning by 26. So it was a really, you know, it was a really, like, un- like an uneven game. It was very lopsided. But the Magic kept coming back. I mean, they have, like, players on the team that can get hot in a hurry. Terrence Ross being one of them, and he was, like, really doing his best to get him back in this game. I believe even taking it down single digits, but the Pacers, veteran team, Oladipo was able to play this game, and they were able to pull out the win. DJ Warren cannot be stopped in this bubble. He is looking absolutely fantastic. We're going to have to see if he's ever going to cool down, but great performance nonetheless by him, and another win for the Indiana Pacers. We move on to the next game, and we have the Miami Heat winning 112-106 over the Boston Celtics, and this game was really back and forth and it was a lot of like Celtics chasing the Heat in this game but you know it was a very entertaining game nonetheless the Heat were basically in control for most of the game but the Celtics went on these like little um, spurts just to like try and get back in the game from great performances you know from Jason Tatum um, Jalen Brown kind of struggled but he had like a good all-around game Kemba in his little bit of minutes got some buckets up but the biggest talking point here was near the end of the game when it looked like Boston was actually going to complete the comeback it was um, shortly lived when freaking Duncan Robinson just went on this massive shooting spree. I mean, he had 5-11 on the evening, but near the end of the game, he had like two, um, two threes in the game to absolutely seal it. And this game without Jimmy Butler, they were still able to um, pull out the win, mostly due to that shooting because they, you know, five more threes in the Boston Celtics. They were able to um, spread out their offense a bit more. And again, a good game from the Miami Heat. Um, good game from Goran Dragic once again, who has been like controlling um, the game, these games for them in the bubble. And you know, a good bounce that game after that loss against Toronto, yes, um, two nights ago. So good win for the Miami Heat. Then we talk about the final game, the primetime game of the evening. We have the Portland Trailblazers winning over the Houston Rockets, 110 to 102. Struggle fest a lot in Houston. Russell Westbrook, 15 points, 9 assists, but 5 for 14 from the field, 5 for 12 from the free throw line, which is absolutely trash. Um, James Harden, 26, 6 to 9, sorry, 23, 6 to 9, not the greatest game as well. Portland dominated on the inside. That is the the big talking point of this game. They out rebounded the um, Houston Rockets, 64 to 39. <laughs> it was just a dominant game on the inside and the Rockets had no answer and when you have Russell Westbrook and James Harden not playing to their capabilities then well, like, you're not going to be able to stop that those inside presence of the Portland Trailblazers I mean Nurkic 18 points 19 rebounds um, you have Carmel Anthony grabbing 11 rebounds you have Damian Lillard grabbing 9 like just like up and down the roster like most of these guys I'm the, I mean Anthony Simons had 2 rebounds but besides that second lowest rebounding player had seven rebounds and they just could not handle it when the stars can't get going the the trailblazers just always found answer on the inside and it was they had some very back-breaking plays like throughout the game and it was just a tough game in general for houston rockets first out it took in the bubble and the Portland trailblazers look like they'll be on their way to the playoffs thank you guys for listening to this daily recap Remember to please follow uh, my Instagram at TV on Basketball. And also, if you're listening to this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, besides that, see you guys tomorrow. Peace.